If you've ever uploaded a video and you just by accident said the word Mickey, then you've probably gotten a copyright strike. Because if there's one company that's stronger than the government, it's Disney. And I'm not saying this to like bash Disney because honestly, like, what am I going to do to them? But it's one of those scenarios where you come to think about how big the corporation has gotten. And when there is things like the recent L.A. Times versus Disney scenario that happened, it kind of puts things into perspective. Some of you may have heard about it. Others probably haven't. Pretty much it goes like this. The L.A. Times went full spotlight into the piece on how Disneyland is in cahoots with the Anaheim politics and they have like things on taxes and a bunch of stuff that happens behind the scenes and pretty much Disney got so upset that they came out and yelled fake news. Now the entire article I have down below so you can read it and, and figure it out but the big thing that everyone looked at Disney for was that they didn't necessarily come out and say hey this point was wrong because of this. They pretty much just came out and said you know what you guys are wrong fake news all of your critics are banned from our Disney movies. And that's a big deal because if you know, a lot of these critics and pretty much anyone who reviews movies needs to have it out opening weekend because if you don't review a movie opening weekend, then what's the point? Ironically, it was this scenario of doing this thing to the LA Time critics that really sparked attention to it and thus that article that they didn't want to get any attention now has a lot of attention. Critics everywhere then started raving that they stood with the LA Times, that they too were going to boycott Disney movies. And for a solid 20-ish hours, people actually didn't like Disney. So let's back it up. In terms of advanced screenings, because some people have never gotten them, those of you who don't know, they'll, I'll put a link down below so you too can go to advanced screenings, but the people who don't have to wait in line, the ones who just go in, the ones who when you look up a movie, they're the first things on Google, they are always told by the studio representatives that screenings are a privilege, not a right. For them. Because are we just going to ignore the fact that most trailers start off by quoting critics, that literally the last Disney film promoted itself by talking about how fresh it was on Rotten Tomatoes, and even for films that don't get advanced releases at all, usually because they're bad movies, even those are movies that just don't release a screening for anyone. They don't, <laughs> like, subjugate one specific group. It was just something that was pretty baffling considering that they themselves have called out other figures for doing something like that to pretty much just go out there and say, I don't like something, so I'm just going to ignore a group that I don't like. And it's like, you, you can't do that when you're a major studio. You're not a Sarkeesian. Either way, like I said, all the critics rose up for the rebellion, and it made me wonder, does boycotting Disney, does it do anything? Can reviews hurt the mouse? Their ads aren't just these three billboards outside of Missouri, they practically own everything. More than we can even imagine sometimes. Because when you really break it down, they have affiliates everywhere from Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, the ABC Network, ESPN, and of course, the most important out of all of them, the Disney Channel. So the thing is, you're watching Disney stuff sometimes when you don't even realize it. So it's like, does Disney even need critics? Other than, of course, like paying them for Marvel reviews. Funny thing is, is that at the end of it, Disney Scorpion, that band, brought it back and just wanted to men in black neuralize everything because they wanted to get rid of the whole solution. But why? Could it be that they were encouraged? They were moved by the fact that all of these critics came together and bonded in solitude in order to have... No, that is absolutely not what happened. What happened was that all of these critics did band together, but they decided to do a band of their own. And the Los Angeles... Angeles Film Critics Association, the New York Film Critics Circle, the Boston Society of Film Critics, the National Society of Film Critics, and the Toronto Film Critics Association all decided to make all of the Disney films ineligible for the year-end awards considerations, which a lot of these are not only preliminaries, but they would have hurt their chances for the big ones that y'all know, like the Golden Globes and the Oscars. So one, you know that Disney wants some sweet awards for Coco and they weren't going to let that go. Two, you know that all the critics were like, oh my goodness, just in time for Star Wars. But three, it shows how much of a tantrum this whole thing was from Disney, because if you're gonna go all out and say they were not good journalists, what they were doing was so out of line, we have to punish them, and then just go, oh, never mind, we don't have to punish them, that it doesn't make any sense. It's like when when you were little and you did something bad, your mom was gonna punish you. She doesn't just unpunish you because all of your friends are outside waiting for you in solidarity. You're gonna get spanked. Now, even though the great critic ban of 2017 has ended, 
It's still one of those things that I think is important to talk about because it questions how Disney can do something like this and take advantage of just getting rid of anybody they don't want to be out there. And the main reason they can do this is because they're so powerful and because we've allowed them to be that big and they have all these affiliations. And what's scary is that they just continue to grow. There was also news that broke out earlier in the week about them having talks to be able to buy out a big portion of Fox, probably because 20th Century Fox is still in the last century. But the thing is, is that by getting something like this, they would then become the biggest corporation out there. Now, don't get me wrong. If that fourth Avengers movie ends up becoming this whole surprise X-Men versus Avengers film after Loki or Thanos ends up breaking the time and space continuum to unite all these universes and finally get that thing that we wanted. Yes, I'm going to be there day one watching every single showing in IMAX, 3D, Dolby Atmos, whatever it has to be. At the same time, I like properties like Deadpool and the way that they are right now and I like the whole idea of competition to be able to spark more ideas between studios and to be able to take something like Deadpool and I don't know what Disney would do to it would it make any sense because Deadpool's so far out there he's so far gone it would be like Disney trying to work with one of their child stars all grown up how you been how's everything been I've been so blessed far? and highly favored taking over the world doing it what it is I do that's what I've been doing luckily I guess sadly, it's, there's not going to be this X-Men Avengers crossover yet because the whole talks were supposed to be about something that's probably maybe scarier depending on how much you love your Netflix and that is that they want to start their own streaming service which is kind of crazy when you remember back to the fact that they had a five-year deal with Netflix and the whole thing ended up just really becoming a one-year deal and where they were really just able to get all this information, all these statistics on how all the streaming thing worked because of their products being on Netflix. They're practically going to Pied Piper them, take everything that they know, be able to take all of the properties that you already know are a bunch of them, be able to make this deal with Fox if it goes through. So then they have series like The Simpsons, they have all of their movies, their franchises, everything on FX that people watch, and then be able to make their own streaming service after they've taken everything away from Netflix and blockbuster them. So while yeah, that sounds like super malicious and it sounds like very power hungry and all these things, the craziest part is that you know you're buying that thing the moment it comes out. Like to be able to have every Disney Channel original movie at my disposal, me and the other me would pay for that. So the main point of my video, the, the main driving point, the discussion that I wanna start up is do we allow these companies to get so big and do we allow them to just be able to trample over us? Because Disney's only big because we allow them to be big. It's because we watch their things. It's because we go to their amusement parks. We allow them to become the massive thing that they are because we don't want to go to Chuck E. Cheese and spend like 20 bucks. We want to give another mouse thousands of dollars to go spend a day at their park. But looking at this case with the critics and seeing how they bonded together and they found that weak point, the one thing that they really knew that Disney would want since they've gone in like like 90% of the animation awards was to be able to check them, to be able to say, it doesn't matter how big you are, you're relying on us and we're gonna make sure you don't abuse it. So it's interesting because we realize that no matter how big they are, no matter how big Mickey Mouse is, every mouse can fall into its own trap.